Hi everyone, it's Charlotte here, fabric artist, textile artist in New Zealand. And this video is a follow-up to my experimenting with gelatos on fabric video. I um, wanted to show you, I kept, I kept working on that sample quilt, and I wanted to show you how I got from the end of that video to what this little quilt looks like today. So at the end of that video, all you could see was this piece of fabric, which looked like that, um, and these leaves that were reverse stenciled. There was no woman's face, there was none of this details. So how did I get from that to this? The first thing I did, and I'll show you on here, is I, this was what the leaves looked like, just this reverse outline. And I used an archival permanent pen. It's not a specifically fabric based one, but you can get specifically fabric based ones. And I outlined and added the details to these leaves. And you can see some of that coming through this translucent layer. My secret weapon in doing that is a sandpaper covered board. This one's got a few old paint marks on it. If you use a sandpaper, very fine grit, and you put it under your fabric, when you draw on it, it doesn't drag the fabric and it lets you draw nice fine marks without getting a, a draggy, bumpy line. So I did that on all my leaves, outlined them and gave them uh, veins and details. And you can see that one coming through there. Then I coloured some silk organza with the gelato sticks as well. This is a piece of silk organza in its raw state, and here's one that's been coloured with the gelato uh, paints, and here's one that's been coloured with the gelato paints. It's had fusible web added to the back, and then I have started to draw the face on, which is how I did this one. To colour the silk organza with the um, gelatos, here's some. You just, it's a creamy, uh, creamy water-based stick paint and basically you just smear it on the fabric and I used um, a cotton pad that I got wet and smeared it around until I had the texture that I liked. And in this one I actually crinkled it up and left it to dry which is how you get some of these lines. So... This fusible web that's on this piece and on this piece is Vlizafix, which is not my favourite because it comes through, as you can see it here, a little bit too shiny. I prefer Misty Fuse on Organza because it's just that much lighter and finer. Once I'd coloured my piece of silk Organza, to draw my face onto it, I basically just grab my sketchbook. Here it is. And I lay my uh, fused organza over the top and I use that archival pen again and I trace the details that I want straight onto my silk organza. And then I, I um, have added, you can see here, I go back with my gelatos and a bit of water and I've added shading details. If we go back to the work here, you can see those shading details that I've added here on that silk organza with those gelatos and in there in those streaks too. So then I cut around very carefully. These are my favourite scissors for that kind of work. They're Karen K. Buckley. She doesn't sponsor me. Wish she did. Um, it's got a very fine micro serrated edge, very sharp point, excellent for this fine kind of cutting detail. I lay it down where I want it on the quilt, or the, the fabric, and then I use Teflon sheets um, and just press it down. And it sticks, and it's beautiful. So, that's how I got from my stenciled work, which kind of looked like that, except it was leaf shape to how it looks today and I'll carry on with layering it up maybe with a few more things on it or basting it and quilting it and I will probably show you progress shots of that 
process as well. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you later.